Hello everyone. Welcome to our lesson 4. We are going to learn about variance and standard deviation. So our mind should be on variance and standard deviation. You cannot get standard deviation before you get variance. How do we get variance? Let us understand the letters in the formula. There is a letter X. X stands for the data that you have been given. It can be the marks of students. It can be the sizes of their shoes. It can be the heights and so on. Frequency stands for the number of times something appears. Number of times something appears. So we have another letter here by X which means mean, okay? It denotes mean. What is mean? From primary, we call it average. How do you get it? It's a product of frequency and x, then you divide by total frequencies. Remember, mean is equal to sigma fx over sigma f. This second formula here is very important whenever you are asked mean from assumed mean. Please note down mean from assumed mean. Assumed mean with the x's, with the data given, will give you deviation. So, once you create a deviation it will go in place of x and you will still get a good answer in place of x in this second formula you can use d for deviation and you will get the correct formula so let us look at example that is given where it has been drawn from 1996 paper 1 number 10 there are different versions of KMF. So, and they keep on changing. So you trace the question. Then we learn from it the skill. Okay? What is the focus of our lesson today? Variance and standard deviation. Two, the second formula is very handy when you are given a question that requires mean from assumed mean and I've said you have to get deviation so deviation is equal to X the data given minus capital A standing for assumed mean so anytime you take X you subtract assumed mean you will get deviation now, from this formula, D now has to be squared. After getting D, square it and multiply by corresponding frequencies. Okay? So you have to create a number of columns to help you get variance. After getting variance, you get standard deviation. But let us focus on this question that was given here so that you can learn more from it. Number one, we have been told it is dealing with the pupils, it is dealing with the students. So there is a mark here, 53, which was scored by student A. 41 was scored by B. 60 by C, 80 by D and 56 by E. You can clearly see that these individual students appear only once, which means if add two, create a column for frequency, it will be here. I will put F1111. Okay, so Frequency is given indirectly, 
it wouldn't change so much the 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 answer which you are going to get because of only one factor it is one in each case multiplication by one does not change the original number so let us look at this this third column is labeled x minus bar x okay x minus bar x which he has already computed for you x minus bar x for the first student this second third fourth fifth those ones who are there we had to complete the table for one mark what is x minus bar x squared x minus bar x has already been done was already given which is this you only compute the square that operation is what is being tested so you compute them you get this it will not change if i multiply if i multiplied 25 times 1 i will still get 25 okay this part multiplied by frequency but if the frequency were different the frequencies were different then this final part would be also different for now it will be 289 4 4 8 4 you can count the and 4 so after getting all this here we have done that we have multiplied by f which happened to be one in each case we got this so we have to get the total sigma the total of all this so the total of all this comes to that we can maybe remind ourselves there maybe I write in this that is our formula bar x squared multiplied by f over sigma f so the numerator the sum of those products is 806 the sum of the frequencies is 5 you can see 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 it is 5 so we have that this when you compute it gives you 161.2 okay so that becomes our variance this one you are to mark maybe i give it that i give this one here and to get standard deviation you get the square root now whenever you are finishing your question you have to read the question what does it want if i'm asked to give it to three significant figures this would be my answer if i was asked to give it to two significant figures it would be 13. if i'm asked four significant figures it will be 12.70 so you must also know how you finish your work depending on the condition that is given so i've just said this just to help you understand this would be the final one now you start low and then you keep on moving this is very important for ungrouped data i'm not saying it doesn't work for grouped but very important for ungrouped data okay this anytime there is a key word calculate mean from assumed mean this is very important how you will have to create a column for d deviations deviations from assumed mean how do you get it d is equal to x you subtract assumed mean which has been given from there create a column of square because we see this is x but now we are operating with d so you have to square the d create another column d squared after getting them multiply by individual frequencies
you will have done this part. This one, D. D first, multiply by F. You get those, FDs. Then divide by F. When you divide, square. So it is a matter of interpreting the columns vis-a-vis -vis the formula. Okay? So you can try this. Next lesson we are doing another topic. Just those topics that came in the paper 